right then. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Sorry, I've been clicking around on different pages on Twitch at the moment. So any comments that came in as the show was opening, I, I missed, like, completely. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so, yeah. Hello, whoever's there. Um, oh, I guess I see a couple. I see some hey hey's, some howdies, some emotes. Yeah, I was clicking around on Twitch trying to figure out, like, analytics and stuff. Uh, day two of the Hellstorm. The February rain apocalypse. <clears throat> uh, and generally, it's been an okay day. Generally, again, though, it's going to be a shorter stream today. In fact, probably the shortest one of the week. Um, I've got some stuff I need to sort out IRL, which includes deep cleaning the place. So uh, that's what I've spent most of today on. Obviously, it's Monday. I had ambitions, and now I've just spent them cleaning and tidying, but hey. Uh, Girl Painting says, Hey WP, did you check get my message about D&D &D in your comments section of the announcement video? It depends when you made it. If you made it over the last six hours, no. If you made it as a response to another comment, uh, probably in the last 24 hours, no as well. If you left it in any other capacity, I should have read it, but it's not ringing any bells. Did the storm hit my town? The storm hit everywhere in England, didn't it? On the day I put it out. Uh, I probably did read it, but I have no memory of it. So whatever you'd proposed or talked about clearly didn't capture my attention. <laughs> um, just to be blunt. Uh, I don't know, though. Uh, what was it? You can repeat yourself. We'll see what you say uh, about D&D. A few people have been talking to me about D&D because of the whole, you know, arena uh, influences on it. You can feel free to say it again, girl painting. I don't mind. Uh, WP is a dog? Question mark says informant246. Indeed, I am. Or I'm the potato in front of the dog. I guess it's for you to decide. Right, so, uh, yeah, back into Drakkar, Bjora. I'm kind of getting to the end of my enthusiasm for the patch right now. Uh, which is pretty good, considering um, mostly it's just, like, strike mission achievements I need left. Uh, however, I do need to cleanse six more cans. I need to find this goddamn brazier. We'll do wiki on that. We'll probably do that today. And idolatry. We've got to get another nine of those. I just don't know how to know which ones I've already done, though. The rest of them are strike missions. Oh, and i got to find Wolverine's champion. Does anyone want to tell me where Wolverine's champion is? Really? I'd love to know. I haven't done these two either. So I don't know, man. Maybe they're in the first half of the map more. As we said before. But uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, we're starting with Drakkar again. Uh, I do need three more Drakkar kills. So I'll get one of these. Drakkar's getting tuned and reward buffed tomorrow. So don't get too bored yet. That's a good point, actually. Uh, that shouldn't be too bad then. Because what we basically will have is... Do I need to fell the trees? No, I did that already. What I need to do is um, three more of these. I'll do uh, one today, and then the last two can be under the new tuning. That could be pretty good. It's the Drakkar fight second boss. No, 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 no. You're thinking of something else. I'm not in the Drakkar section, Jerky. I'm in the Shadow in the Ice section, which is different. There's a, there's a whole other achievement involving... Um, I've definitely killed the middle boss before. There's a different one which involves... What, what the hell is it? Yeah, it's here. It's... They're wandering around. And there's the Wolverine's champion here. Wolverine champion is on the cliff above the Wolverine shrine next to the light mirror. Ah. Interesting. I see. Okay. Literally that cliff to my far left that I'm looking at. Right, well, maybe I'll go up there then. I mean, Jokar's going to take a while. Maybe I'll go have a look. He might be there. Maybe they don't overlap with the meta. In which case, you know, this is going to be pointless. But it's worth having a little look, isn't it? I had chorizo soup today. And big recommendation from me. Champion Aberrant Wisp it had there. I almost saw. Um, and what prompted me to say that there was I just burped a little under my breath and I can still taste it hours later. It was that strong and neaty of a taste. It was brilliant. Hello, chat. <laughs> I'm sure that's disgusting what I just said to you all, but there you go. It's good food. 
Uh, hey, WP. Hey, chat. Hope you're all doing good. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the big topic of today really is I did the Patreon update and uh, it's been incredible. I'm a little scared to really look at it and figure exactly what's going on. But um, obviously, we lost that money in January. Uh, the, here's the side of the story I didn't talk about. We lost the money uh, in January of like $230. In December, I'd also lost this about the same amount, about 200. In fact, maybe even a little bit more. In December, I think I lost 260 in those two months. Um, and I'm pretty sure that since putting the video up, we're, we're clear over that again. So we're okay. Uh, which is like the big thing, you know, in that video, I said, if in just a year, well, no, I said, if in a year I can get back to where I used to be, I'd be happy. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. But to, to have fixed that glaring issue that was suddenly there based on, um, uh, I'm just going to try and climb and see if I can see any other event nearby. Has been really good. So I just want to say wholeheartedly and emphatically, I'll probably say it a thousand times in the coming days, thank you to everyone who really did respond to that video. It's still the most recent video on my channel. I would really, really implore anyone to check, take a look at it. Um, it's It's been cool to see everyone's support, and it's been nice to know that I'll actually be able to do this job f for a bit longer at least. But I am terrified now, I have to say. I'm really scared. People are really putting a lot of, you know, faith in me here. Which is weird to me and scary to me, you know. What's particularly interesting here is whenever I've used Patreon in the past, it's been like an endorser. I've always read it, the community that I've got there. I've always read as a um, uh, an endorsement of me covering Guild Wars 2. And, you know, enthusiasm to see more Guild Wars 2. And do what I've always been doing. This time it's like people are supporting even though they know. Oh, by the way, no game audio. Uh, I'm trying to shake things up. I might do really crappy stuff. Can I just say to you all? Please set your expectations low or something. I don't know. Like, I might do bad. And I'm really scared that it's like... People are going to be like, why have I made this mistake? What What am I doing here? This is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, in, in March it will be gone again or something. I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of... I don't know. I'm in a weird place. I'm not sure I'll ever just be happy and comfortable, you know. I'm such an insecure, like, mess at the moment. Maybe eventually. Look, if things are looking good and I'm making good stuff by, like, March, April, maybe we can start to chill out. For now, I feel very much a little bit wobbly, but you guys have been amazing, I have to say. And it's really, really, really sweet of yours. So thank you, everyone. Um, and as well, uh, I, I might have mentioned this yesterday, but I feel like... Um, the video I produced, because I did the channel update and the Patreon one really close to one another, I never really uh, gave any commentary time to just say thank you to people who jumped the gun, you know. There were a couple of people who joined between these two productions just because they wanted to, and to you as well, you know. My, my heart goes out to you. Thank you so much. Well, my heart goes out to you. That's not the right phrase, is it? Anyway, I really appreciate it. AWP from school. You should not be at Twitch at school, young man or woman. You should be focusing on your studies. And passing your GCSEs. Put that laptop down. You know, I looked at my demographics the other day again, guys. Because, you know, I'm trying to, like, figure out what the hell it is I do. Who, who, it, is, who it is that watches me. Does anyone want to guess what proportion of the Wooden Potatoes YouTube audience is in the 13 to 17-year-old range? Does anyone want to guess? I'll repeat the question for those who weren't paying attention. Does anybody want to guess... As to what percentage, what proportion of my audience on YouTube is in the 13 to 17 year old range. Now remember the 13 to 17 year old range is the most lucrative range if you're looking for lots of views. Because these are people who have got the time to do it. So what, what percent? So, uh, and I'll get the exact number up again. I looked at this a couple of days ago so I can't remember exactly. And I do want to be very precise for you all. You can, you can go to the decimal point as well if you like. Go and put your guesses in there. And I'll announce whoever uh, wins this pointless exercise in one second. Come on, man. Wow. Like, my PC up here is so slow loading YouTube. It's unbelievable. Come on now. Take me to my dashboard. I'm uh, getting carried at your car because I'm not doing anything. Sorry about this, guys. If I had the ability to Google and play at once, believe me. I'd be all over that. I suppose I could just regurgitate footage I'd already recorded and just sit here talking and Googling in the meantime. Um, 
So yeah, not not much, co not many comments on the Patreon video, and not much like uh, uh, viewership on it really compared to the others. But that's fine because it's non-content, so I completely expect that, you know. But from what what came of it, it does seem, even though you know it's it's a kind of a low bar video, uh, it seems to have got you know a few people have actually come along, you know. So that's really good, and I, I've been very happy with that. I, I knew inevitably people would ask me about that on today's stream, and it, it is really 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 cool. Um, uh, what I'll do is I'll watch how it goes over this month now. If next month we're still all right and people aren't tuning out on mass, then uh, then brilliant. If they have started tuning out, I'll look into the credits pages, all that kind of stuff. You know, I'll just keep pushing it. By the way, I actually have 22 more subscribers than usual on YouTube this month, despite the fact I told you all to uh, get bent and leave. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Audience, here we go. All right, the answer to the question, my proportion... Of 13 to 17 year olds. Let's see who is most correct. All right, here's the guesses. Uh, all right, we've got 30 from Jerry, 100% from Apotheles, 28, 10, 48, 99, 45, 5%, 15, 36, 25, 32, 60, 100, 63, 75, 2, uh, 47, 20, 100, 12, less than 10%, 7, 69, 32. All right, it's too many to read. Uh, Kabad's guessed 1%. I'm only going to read ones that are close now. Feathers guessed 0.1%. Uh, let's see what else we've got. 2.2. .2. All right. The closest person was feathers, believe it or not. Because the proportion of you that are uh, 13 to 17 years old is 0.4%. 0.4%. Like, people in that age range cannot handle my format. They will not watch it. I don't know what that means for, like, the next 10 years, right? Are they going to eventually, like, start watching me? Or or am I forever doomed because, you know, it's not zoomery enough? Can you believe that, guys? 0.4%. You know, I that was real news to me. Because I often sort of imagine that there's a lot of very young people watching me, like, silently in the background. I guess I've been so thoroughly dismissive and twatty about that and so, like, ageist over the years that, that they're just not... They're literally not there. There's, there's genuinely no reason for me to imagine any of you are 17 or below. Any of you. Particularly those dedicated enough to come to one of these streams. There's maybe some 13-year-old lurking right now, but he'll quickly turn off when he realises there's no face cam and we're, we're talking about complete nonsense. How, and I'm kind of amazed at that. Point three. How crazy is that? All right, so what do you guys want to guess my my heaviest demo is? I'll give you the uh, the options here. We already know it's not 13 to 17, and they don't track anyone younger than 13, by the way. Is it 18 to 24, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, 45 to 54, 55 to 64, or 65 and over, which is my highest demo. What are the majority of you guys? Which bracket is that? You can guess. If you can't remember all the ranges, just type a, like a, just a straight up regular age. And we'll see. I don't know what that says about the aging population of the Guild Wars fan base as well, by the way. All right, people have put their guesses in. All right, I, I won't read them all. The, uh, the highest demo is in my age range. It's 25 to 34. And by the way, over the years I've been at YouTube, I have actually noticed that my max, my, my general demo is always around my age. So does that mean my videos feel older now than they did? Like there's an older soul delivering them than they did six years ago or whatever, you know, whenever I, you know, or the early days when I started and that bracket might have been different. That's weird, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, anyway, and then uh, and then second most is 18 to 24. Hello to all of you. Third most is 35 to 44. I do want to give you one one other interesting little thing. All right, and that's this. You know how I have 0.4% 13 to 17 year olds. 0.4% of you are 13 to 17. Now I want to ask you this question: How many? What proportion are over 65? How many like 
70 year olds, you know, how many 65 plus do I have? Now remember, I have 0. 0.4, 13 to 17. How many are on the other end of the bell curve? The 65's up. What percentage are we looking at? Less than a percent. 11, 2, 8, 1.7. 5 to 10. Some of you guys are guessing quite high. I guess I'm quite cynical that there's a lot of like 70 year olds watching YouTube. But uh, the answer is I have 1.3. So, and that's way higher than I thought. Now, if you compare that, that means I have tri over triple the number of 65 pluses than I have kids. So for every like 13 year old in my audience or 17 year old, there are three people nearing or in their 70s or 80s and so on. Like people of that age range outnumber the 13 year olds three to one. How crazy is that boomer streamer, right? I'm really happy with that. I like the idea that someone with a lot of like life experience actually has something to gain. That's kind of cool. Listen to me Ram prattling on about whatever. How cool is that? And yeah, mad res uh, as someone said in chat, respect to any of them. I, I totally agree. Respect to any of them. You're loving the videos. Such good stuff. Keep up. Thanks very much. Well, uh, I decided what I'm doing this week, by the way. Did I pick Elder Scrolls? Did I pick Guild Wars 2? Or did I pick like more generic things to see how they go? I'm actually picking the generic things. So, and I wanted to get started working today, but I, I've done nothing, pretty much. Because everything I've been doing is real life adulting BS. Uh, so what I'm um, what I'm hoping to do this week, you guys won't see Elder Scrolls stop or Guild Wars stop or anything like that. Hopefully I've been very clear about that. Uh, but just what I choose to prioritize first, I've decided to prioritize that. And we'll see how the videos go. I'm, I'm just going to treat it as a bit of a testing ground. Any weird video you see this week that seems totally out of my ballpark or out of my niche or whatever, I want you guys to think really carefully about if you enjoy it. If you do, share the shit out of it if you can. That's what I really want. If people share them, anything that does well, I'll take as a sign maybe I should do more of. I'm only going to do things I'm passionate about. I'm only going to do things that are interesting to me. I'm only going to do things that are in my style. It's still my channel. I'm not going to lose my way or anything like that. I've been very, very discerning and picky about what I might do this week. But as far as how good the videos are, this is... This is a very real time to be a Wood of Potatoes fan because you're really kind of going to signal to me to go one way or another with a lot of this stuff. I'm going to give you like a variety and we'll see what happens. That's the idea. It's a bit of a testing ground. And by the way, I've already done two big channel updates. So that this information I'm giving you right now, I think is quite crucial. I'd rather everyone knew, but I'm not doing another channel update. No more non-content from me for a while, hopefully. So uh, basically, um, yeah, this stream is my only outlet to really explain that to you all. And hopefully it's all right. But you have to let me know. And, and that's why I'm scared, really. You know, we're in such a period of transition. But that's good, you know. That's what a whole new year and, a you know, we're in the 2020s now. That's what it's supposed to feel like, you know. Fear is, is good or whatever, I suppose. Get out of your comfort zone. Uh, hi, WP. Love the content. Keep it up. Very excited. What's to come from your YouTube channel? I'm in the 18 to 24 range. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Listen, guys, a new rule. If you're going to leave me a comment, you need to type to me what your age is, okay? And I will decide whether your comment is allowed a response based on the age that I see, okay? So, uh, I wonder, yeah, I think someone mentioned a second ago, you could lie, I guess, about not being in the 13 to 17-year-old range. Everyone wants to say they're 18, right? Steam asks you while you're buying something. Uh, I think I just had some notifications. I'll have to have a look at those. <clears throat> Uh, a North Stars with Twitch Prime. Loving the new initiative. Sadly, you can't support me on Patreon for a little bit. So uh, this is the only way. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Look, t Twitch Prime subs and stuff, it all, it all counts. It all adds up. That's what I was looking at, right, as I was starting the stream here. I was like, how much do I actually get from Twitch? And, you know, it's not, it's not nothing. So please, no one feel bad about that at all, ever. Your yearly taxes are due the end of this month. 31. Oh, I thought you meant the 31st is the date. I was like, but it's February. Uh, but no, you mean that's your age. <laughs> if the channel updates get the most views, why not make one? Well, they don't. Video that got the most views this month was Problems with Guild Wars 2. Or last month. Or in the last 30 days, let me put it that way. Was Problems with Guild Wars 2 video. The second most was actually the Balance video. 
The third most was um, Whisper in the Ice trailer thing. So it's, it's all Guild Wars stuff that's, that's doing the most viewership, really. It's just that that viewership is way, way, way down from where it used to be and is encouraging to people less. And also, the one the, the problems video isn't really the kind of thing you can do loads of. That's just shitting on the game, really. And, and you can't do that constantly. People don't want to hear that constantly. They want to jerk off over how exciting it is to be angry for a bit and then kind of move on, you know. So, um, yeah. Then I think my channel update is after that. I think that's the fourth most popular. But, yeah, obviously you can't just do that all the time. I don't have much to update you on. I'm a pretty boring person, really. Didn't the problems video hit the front page of our gaming? It was on our gaming, yeah. That is the biggest video of the past 30 days. It's got like 80k views at the moment. So, uh, you know, it's not a bad one. I feel like I should change this second mantra. Maybe. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm sure analytics-based discussion isn't that interesting to people, but uh, it's just what I've been looking at lately. <clears throat> it's crazy. The two times I considered to stop throwing five bucks a month, the same day you managed to convince me to stay a while. First with the announcement of the Guild of LP, now with the channel update. That's, uh, that's really cool, man. I'm glad to hear that. Saved by the bell, eh? I bet there's a lot of people in your position. To be honest, if I really look at things, considering how bad, I mean, the last two years in general were bad, but the specifically December and January were really, really bad. Really, I'm like two months saved by the bell. I'm like a few months late to have been saved by the bell, I guess, probably. Because there's a lot of people over New Year that really did seem to make that decision. And that that's fine. I, I perfectly get it. You just reached the Who's Talking part on Zero to Hero playlist. Whatever happened to that app? Is Resta still developing it? Um, now, this might just be because I'm really shit at keeping in touch with people, and I really am. But I feel like Resta's kind of disappeared. Maybe he's still around? But um, I don't think the app was going where he wanted it to, at the speed he wanted it to, or getting the interest. So I, 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 I miss Resta's, really. I'd love to chat with him about what he's doing. I'm assuming he, he moved on and spent his talents on other things, other communities, other jobs, stuff like that. Could be the Brexit for that. What affecting my Patreon user base? <laughs> what, well, don't forget, Brexit Day was only really recently. Uh, was only recent, really recent. Sorry. Um, so I don't think it's even right in terms of timing. Thanks very much for the sub there, GDS Alariana. It's great to see you. Oh, and I missed one earlier, didn't I? Uh, I think I did. Learning RPGs. A Samuel Min. Thanks, guys. The other thing that maybe to note about the stuff I'm hoping to make this week is if it all does well, it might affect the streams too. What is this? Hype train. Sub, gift, or use bits to get to the next level. 94%. Five minutes. What is this? You triggered the train. What is it? What is a train? 100%. What's a hype train? Uh, Holzik, Holisik, thanks very much. A scam train. <laughs> uh, cool. This is some, uh, a train is a type of vehicle. <laughs> thanks for the info. <laughs> we leveled up. What does that mean? Man, pay attention to new Twitch features. Well, you guys can fill me in. What, what is it? <laughs> Two. Oh, I'm playing so bad today as well. My damage is going to be really low compared to all the other Drakars I've done. I'm just looking at chat the whole time. It's a way to earn a living. Looks like a kind of gamery front end on another, like, you know. You got a new emote thanks to someone's gift. Thank you. Now I'm going to click the thank button. There you go. Look at that. You got a thanks from me. I got gifted a, a sub on my own channel. What? How does that even work? This is my channel. Oh my god. You've gifted stuff to loads of people. 25 emotes shared. Cowboy Jake got one. Cleavage Tenchi got one. Ariam got one. Gears to Gnome. Palin TV. Thank you, everyone. 
Oh, by the way, uh, the next video at the end of this stream, or after the end of this stream, really, because, again, I, we might just get a little bit in here today, uh, is going to be, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, Arena. Arena Part 3 is coming up. Only a few hours away. Not even that. And then we are off to the races. Thanks very much. Those Twitch feature probably confused the hell out of your 65 plus demo. <laughs> they confused the hell out of me. <laughs> no, look, I've got to assume. There's a thing, right? Like, it depends how you conduct your life, I think. You can become very inactive and very unhealthy and misfortune, obviously, can just ruin you. And you can be in kind of a bad place once you're into your 70s. Or you can stay pretty active and you can stay pretty up with it and you can keep actively pursuing new hobbies. And you can be a very, you know, down to the ground, like intelligent, smart, capable, able-bodied, well-rounded human into your 70s, 80s and beyond. I don't know. I kind of want to stop paralyzing people, really. You shouldn't just think 80 and have a certain expectation. It just depends how you conduct your life going forward, you know. It's never too late to start. In your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, just just start. Just be who you want to be. That's kind of how I feel. And anyone who's watching me, I have to assume, is kind of in that category, surely, right? Surely. If, in your, if you're in your 60s, you were born in, in the 50s at the moment, right? Realistically at the moment. you're in your 60s at the moment, you're kind of a generation above my own parents. A little. A half generation above my own parents. There's definitely no internet or Twitch or anything like that. I don't even think you could imagine. Not even the wildest dreams of the craziest sci-fi writers in the, you know, the 50s. Or let's say, uh, maybe in the 60s. Could have really thought of Twitch. And yet, in the entertainment and value people would get out of something. I'm going to go into gate two and kill the thing just in case. But I don't think it is this. Do you think there's more of the Drakkar species out there? Maybe, but you tend to find that things like this become kind of apex predators. And like they're, 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 they're all... I said apex, I don't know why. Obviously, but they're, uh, they're not even apex predators really. In the game of trading magic, surely only the Elder Dragon is the true apex. I don't know. The Elder Dragon creates it. Maybe it can choose to create more ones. Or uh, maybe it's just the last of its kind. Maybe it's kind of like a Samurogi thing. What I like in gaming now that you have all kinds of people playing from all ages. You have people from 16 to almost 70. That's so cool. It is. It is really, really weird, to be honest. Sometimes I find that I'm really enthusiastic about that realization. And sometimes I don't care. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, so what? Kind of thing. Really sort of depends. So why is Drakkar sometimes vulnerable to red, but none of the other colours? Or is he sometimes vulnerable to any of them? It depends what colour he is, right? He's green at the moment, so he's vulnerable to red. Because he's grass and I'm using fire. In true Pokemon fashion. We have a level 3 hype train now. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to be pumping this up. Well, you guys, yeah, stream delay will make this really hard, but you guys have got 45 seconds. If a sub happens in 45 seconds, the hype train will go to the new level or whatever. But it will drop if not. There's 30 seconds now. I kind of want to see how high that goes. What does it do? I feel like if this doesn't happen now, this is the closest it's ever going to get. <laughs> it goes as high as level 5, does it? And what happens at level 5? They really know how to appeal to that gamer mentality, don't they? Oh, I think he's going to drop. It, it, it is. 10 seconds. It gives unique emotes. Oh, is that what I got? Would it work if you unsub and resub? I don't think so. I doubt you can game the system. What? Someone did it in time. Are you serious? Oh, no, no, no. It ended, so therefore. Such strong report. Level 2 complete. <laughs> Dude. I'm so cynical about all that, but I guess it's interesting. Show off your support in chat. Hooray, let the channel know you've earned a new hype train emote. It looks like a cat thing. Someone's going to like try and spam that emote now, and my own rules are going to say, Stop spamming emotes. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. That was really cool. 
Oh, somebody just gifted a ton, but I think they're late. I think you're late, man. I, I think that's it. I think it's over. Oh, no. I feel really bad for them. Wish Monkey gifted five subs. I think it's over, dude. I'm really sorry. Shat, I got a sub. Kairos. Tomato's lurking, apparently. He got one. Schmendalf and Goldstab. This hype train thing confuses me as much as the fact that people pay for it and use him. I'm 100% just going to chat here. This has been pretty bad, honestly. I'm like the ultimate casual. I'm like the ultimate guy you don't want in your world, world boss encounter right now. Kairos' golden potatoes are back. They are indeed. Check it out, dude. Looking good. You'll notice how beautifully there I pulled him out of the Scepter 2. Right on the last tick. Hey, WP, I wonder if I'm the only Latino that watch it do. Uh, absolutely not. I could give you some more analytics if you'd like. Do you guys want to know the countries that watch me? Now, this has changed a lot. I don't know how or when this changed or why. By the way, I'm only giving you results from the last 28 days right now. All right. It used to be that Germany and the UK combined were more than the people from the US. So there were Germans and there were, you know, people in my own country. If I put you all in a room, there would be more of you than Americans. So the Americans were kind of the minority compared with Europe. And when I say that, that's because mostly it was Germans watching me. There were some French and there were some Spanish. There were some Italians, not, not much else. It was mostly Germany, right? Ger Germans are more into this shit than anyone else in Europe, as far as I can tell. But uh, that's not true anymore. I don't know when that changed. It's not true. We're back to the USA being number one. So here's my metrics. It's 29% is from uh, the US, somewhere in the US. So, uh, yeah. If I put three of you in a room, one of you is probably American. Which is slightly less than one of you. If I put 30 of you in a room, there'd be like nine of you were American or something like that. Right? So, uh, yeah, you're number one. Germany is number two at 8.7. United Kingdom is number three at 7.8. So Germ I have more Germans watching me than Brits. I don't know whether that... That probably speaks to the fact that my accent is only interesting if you're not from this country. And if that goes away, the value you get out of it <laughs> goes down. Because you just realize what a mug I am. Next, it's Canada at 4.6. Pretty big drop down there. Netherlands after that at 3. Austria after that at 2%. 2% Sweden. 2% Poland. 2% France. You see that? There's such a massive difference between Germany and France. It's really crazy, right? If you, could, if you combine all these European countries together, I probably still do have more Europeans watching than, than States. They're just split up more, you know. Um, there's 1.5 Brazilian. Uh, 1.3 Finland. 1.2 Belgium. 1.2 Denmark. 1.2 Portugal. 1.0 Spain. I, can, I think I can filter it as well in terms of watch hours and stuff. I can tell you that there is like one guy from Saudi Arabia that watches me and he has spent 162 hours watching me. Oh, it's probably more than one person. In the past month, no, there's got to be... The, uh, the lowest country is Saudi Arabia and they've spent 162.9 hours watching me over the past uh, month, the past 28 days. I don't know what videos. I can't see that. A lot of those low countries is like Estonia's down there, Latvia, Hong Kong, Japan, Slovakia, Ukraine, Argentina. All these people are like below 1%, but they are there. The Irish, I have hardly any Irish watching me, but they watch me lots compared to anyone else. Like, if you're from Ireland and you watch me, you probably spend twice as long on my videos as people from Chile do. And people from Chile... I have the same number of you. 
The Irish are bigger fans, basically, than the Chileans. Is that how we say that? Chileans? But yeah, people from the States, I have loads of people from the States, but they don't watch much. Like, they've... They tend to probably tune out of the video quicker, I guess, maybe. They've watched 46,257 hours in the last 28 days. That's how many hours of my voice has been broadcast over there. But compared to the number of viewers, you would expect it to be about 33% more. Look, I'm going to stop this now. All right, let's talk about Guild Wars. Does anyone have a lore question? Let's open the chests. When does your day usually start? I noticed it's 5.30. My London boss w works until like 10 his time. Well, I don't really have an official, official start time for my day. I wake up and then I go for it. And sometimes my alarm will be one hour forward. Sometimes it'll be one hour back. Sometimes it'll be two hours forward. Sometimes it'll be two hours back. Starting next week, I've got more reason to wake up a lot earlier. So just for an unrelated IRL thing um, to do with my mother. So I uh, basically um, should be starting even earlier. This is supposed to be the end of my day, but for the, all the way through January, it hasn't really. It's kind of a midpoint. Who's the most pointless lore character? All right, well, how do we define pointless? To have a point in lore is to express some something, right? To be entertaining or to be intriguing or to breadcrumb something later. So I would argue that the duplicate merchant at Yak's Bend in Guild Wars 1 is the most pointless lore character because he's there, he's, he looks like an Ascalonian, he has a name, but he does nothing. And the service he offers you also offers you nothing. So the fact that we have the name of that one guy, he's probably the most pointless character. And you might say, well, look, at least he's got a unique name. So that builds to, you know, a more intriguing setting. And it apply applies a little bit more depth there and plausibility. You know, these people have names. There's detail work there. And I agree with that. What I would say, though, is if you pick a random NPC, like if you took a random factions outpost and you looked at the exclusive area within the factions outpost where there are generically named merchants, where it just says merchant, I wouldn't say that's lore at all anymore. I wouldn't say he's a pointless lore character. I would just say that's a facet of the game. That's not even lore anymore. That's just a service. So, uh, so yeah, I'd do that. And there's probably some contemporary examples in Guild Wars 2. And also, yeah, I did just pull out of my house. I don't know whether there's a duplicate merchant at Yak's Bend. But there are some plate Like, a duplicate merchant at the Henge of Den Ravi. Let's put it that way, right? I just said Yak's Bend. It was the first thing that came to my mind. That is what I would say the most pointless lore character is in the game. Do you think the human gods will ever make a comeback in the story? I think uh, they already did in Path of Fire. I don't think we'll go much further than what they did with POF. I don't think they really have a lot of those inner workings and tapestries laid out. I've done numerous discussions on why the Cormier scene feels a bit wrong and broken in some way. Um, so is it this Wisp? I don't remember ever killing the Wisp. Oh yeah, it is. Defeat the Wolverine champion, the Wisp. All right, so we kill this and we get an achievement. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think um, I think they're probably done with it. Even more reason why I think Arena Net could do some kind of new IP or something interesting. Man, guys, can you imagine this? Imagine that I actually do a good job these next coming months, and I manage to grow the channel and do lots of really good things. And then later in the year, Arena Net announce something, and I can go like full onto it. Imagine how good that would be for like all of us. Imagine how much fucking awesome shit we'd have to, to see and to enjoy. I pledge to you, I will go ham on anything really good that ArenaNet does. Imagine if they gave us something. But we might be still be waiting like a year, two years for something like that. So, I mean, I'm not going to sit here just hoping. But it could be a really good year. It could be one of my best years ever if, if everything goes right. I just... Trying so hard to get his break bar down, and I don't even know whether it's necessary. Oh, did I just get it twice in a row? Because my special action lined up perfectly. I totally did, didn't I? I really like that when I can get the uh, prep the torch for do some kind of axe animation and then throw it before it expires so you get the extra tick. It's 
really good. Quite often I'm just double throwing it though. Uh, do I? I guess I will. Okay. I'm not really on the right weapon set to abuse this. I swapped just for the shield thing and then the, me the mechanic came up. On my own, I don't know whether it's worth using the five. Still don't know whether it's worth using that either. good because I can use a tome in the space of the actual weapon cooldown. Meaning it wasn't such a stupid decision. The three there was just to get the... Uh... Alright, there we go. We might get a double burn again now. Yeah, we did. Nice. Oh my god, that's so good. I had a bit of lag there. I missed the uh, two again. It's fine. It doesn't matter too much. Actually do some more hose. I might not need to waste time trying to break the bar again. If I just had a, a chill sigil on, it, this would have he, he would have been getting drained. I wouldn't even have to actively do stuff. All right, cool. A bountiful pastime. Nice. Took a bit, but he seemed pretty tanky. I was doing anywhere from five to ten k a tick on that. So he must have had a, several hundred thousands. <clears throat> I don't know whether it's scaled before I uh, came up. How often are the arena let's plays getting posted? Once a week? No, 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 no. It's one every other day. You got one today in like literally like an hour and a half. An hour, no, an hour and a quarter. Then tomorrow's Guild Wars 2. And then the day after that's arena. And then it's Guild Wars 2. And then it's arena. And then it's Guild Wars 2. And then it's arena. And then it's Guild all the way through. It's every other day. One a week. How could it be one a week? The, the series hadn't even started yet last week. And we're already three episodes in? Or three videos in? Every time I walk near the edge, I expect you to get blown off. You know what? Yeah, I was getting vibes from of Dry Top here because I was thinking of you know the uh, the 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 special event on that like um, here. I'll just mouse over it. I can't remember. It's against a high leg. I wouldn't know how to describe the uh, the topography, the the the, the geograph. This here. Wait, where? Yeah, here. This. You know, you climb up the side, use the jumpy thing, and then you're on that. And you, if you fall, you're screwed. If I can achieve it to stay up, that's what that was reminding me of. Really was. <clears throat> Good, you hunger for more arena. Yeah, the idea is that people can regularly watch it. It's been hard because I had so many like really crucial videos to put up, and I needed space for everything. And I, what I, what I have been really one of the things I've been scared with. Hopefully, I walked the line right. Is I didn't want everyone to be like, okay, here's arena, and then put out the videos so slow that they're not interested. They've got to have a lot to watch early to get hooked, right? If I can't hook you. Like, I don't even think you've seen really any Overworld gameplay yet, which is crazy, to be honest. Like, that's the bulk of the game. You haven't even got there yet. And the series is almost a week old. So I've, I've been very insecure about that. Don't worry, though. It, we've hit the pace now. That's it. There's no more interruptions. It's We're alternating. Um, Tava, you have a lore question. I was listening to your commentary on the char being humanized, and I still don't understand why you attribute qualities of humanity as qualities that are exclusive to humanity. I don't know how it would be to best frame this question, but why do you believe that traits that humanity have adopted can only be limited to humans? Why do you view traits only as exclusive to Char? I never said any of that. I've never believed any of that. What you are making is the same mistake everyone makes with this discussion, is you think I'm talking about plausibility and potential within the universe and what could realistically or feasibly happen. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I completely accept and acknowledge that a, a society like the Omicron could become super peaceful and turn their backs on their initial ways. I totally get that the physiology of the char doesn't necessarily fully dictate how every culture they ever express is. I'm not talking about the plausibility of the setting. What I am talking about is deeper than just the plausibility of the setting. I'm talking about Guild Wars 2 as a narrative work, as a world that is artificial and constructed for particular reasons. And what I take issue with is the dismantling of the specifically created opposing structures within the world that ArenaNet made. There's a reason that the Char are animalistic and their culture is different. It's so that they can bounce off and reflect against the way that the, Sav the Savari act or that the humans act or that the Asura act. It's so that there is potential for conflict and drama and interest. And my argument is that I don't enjoy the writing 
and the pacification of the chart because it leads to a less interesting setting. I'm talking about the writing. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what is plausible or what you can make an excuse to concoct within your world. ArenaNet can find a hundred reasons to make any of the societies or any of the things we interact with do any number of things. To just talk about the plausibility of something is ludicrously shallow, especially when this is a fantasy franchise that's always going to play it fast and loose with the plausibility of what's going on. It's a world filled with magic. You can explain anything away. Explanations are uninteresting to me. What I'm trying to talk about is something to do with the game itself and the experiences the game seeks to present. And I think it's a mistake to pacify the char. And I think it's a mistake to flounderize the norn, right? Because it creates a less rich setting. So you've asked that question. It's been several months since someone's also asked me that. So hopefully I gave you a good rounded answer. But uh, that's, a, that's a frustrating one to me because I've answered that so many times and people don't get it. They just want to talk about plausibility. Or like niceness. They're like, oh, but you know, the char should be nice. I can imagine the char being nice. I play a char and my char's nice. You know, that's what they're like. They're like, I could imagine it. I want the char to be nice. Yeah, because you're, you're thinking shallow about how the, the story can be presented and what opportunities are within it. I will happily demonize any one of the, the factors within this world if it means that we get something curious or noteworthy out of it. So yeah, that's uh, that's 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 my discussion. Hopefully that's a good answer. Yeah, so Quick Bean there says that the Omicron are his favorite. The Omicron work when they bounce off of a prevailing culture of animalistic, brutal savages. Then the Omicron work. Now it's like notable and it's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. These guys managed to shake that away. Let's get some detail on how they changed, why they changed, what they're like now. Does any part of them still persist? What kind of, you know, factors went into this? These are interesting questions, but they are only interesting questions when you have real char also in the picture and being presented properly in the picture and regularly. But if the devs don't pay due diligence to allow their set pieces to be stereotyped and to be what they are meant to be, then the fundamentals of the experience start breaking away. And that, that is often what ArenaNet drops the ball on. And not just with the major races, right? Not just with them. There's all kinds of shit out there. The Quaggan come to mind, for example, with their rage modes. The slightly a different uh, topic, I think, but yeah. I just want to say I'm excited for the new direction. I've always loved your content, but I lost interest in Guild Wars 2. I'm happy to say I resubbed on Patreon, and I'm happy to keep to come back to you for things other than Guild Wars 2. Keep up the good word. I'm 27, by the way, for the analytics. I shoot lasers. I recognize your name, too. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. People keep saying that to me, and I'm like, all right, you want to see all this? What do you want to see, though? Like, I don't know. I've got my ideas, but I don't know what the fuck any of you guys are expecting. I mean, it's an arena playthrough for now. Hopefully, that's enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, but thanks, man. Hopefully, I'll create other cool things for you that is interesting to watch. Falcotto says, aren't there political and economic incentives for the Legion to become more progressive? Maybe. That's not arguing. Uh, is that a dis... Is that meant to counteract anything I've just said? Because, again, you're talking about plausibility. You're talking about in-universe justifications, which are not the be-all and end-all. I know many of you think that they are, but they're really not. They're really not. The be-all and end-all is, is where you're going with the franchise and what you're doing with the world. Everything you should do should be to make or maintain how compelling of a place Tyria is, right? And you can undermine any kind of plausible things that might happen that lose the drama. And you can accentuate stuff that would. You know, a part of the writer's job, obviously, is to obfuscate this, this busy work going on in the background. You, you shouldn't be seen as pulling the strings. But uh, that is what they're doing, you know. That's what I'm talking about. So, yeah, I feel like I've just always been trying to get these points across, but I'm talking at cross purposes. People just don't get it. Sandswept Isles underrated. It is underrated. I love Sandswept Isles. I think it's really cool. Did you guys just get the big frame drops there as well as me? You feel like you're watching the Star Wars prequels all over again. Was this a, was this a topic here? <clears throat> and yeah, you know, the, uh, maybe the Star Wars prequels are interesting in as much as, you know... Well, not the prequels. I was going to say that uh, obviously the newer trilogy kind of just went over the same thing over and over and over again. And you don't want to do that too. You do want to progress the world. You do want to feel like there's some sense of movement. And obviously that is the main thing that is 
I think, compelled the writers, as we now know them, to push Tyria in the direction that it's been going. But that's not, you know, not all progress is pro progress is not progress for progress's own sake. Is phrase that right? Probably not. Against what factions do you think the next world versus world influence map will be? Orin versus Jormag? Pact versus Bangor's army? Army? Svana? I don't know. You've, you've listed a lot of cool ones. You've missed out the, the deep sea dragon idea. I think this vision of the mist patch, which should be coming soon, right? Uh, will teach us that. I think when we figure out what the hell Bangor's doing, we'll learn a bit more. If I'm honest, a lot of my guildies were going off uh, Guild Wars 2, your content, but Guild Wars 2 in general. They're loving the arena playthrough, which has rejuvenated the law. I had a very honest message from someone yesterday who basically said, yeah, I, I stopped because uh, you were just doing patch note videos. And, you know, that's kind of true, to be honest. Those won't be going anywhere, though. I love doing patch note videos. <clears throat> well, in as much as they're newsy things that no one will watch later, but they're, they're, they're clean videos to me. I love my WP's relentless belief there's going to be something to do with the Deep Sea Dragon. There will be, damn it. There will be. I can just sense it. I'm going to get these last two vistas. Just because. And we might find an idol while we're at it without having to use wiki. Oh my god, I still have the map uh, spinning. Let me un unhook that. And by the way, I will also just note that you might listen to me responding to chat about the char here and stuff and and completely get a weird inter impression on what my take on the current stories are. I actually think the char have been done pretty well um, this season. I think it's particularly the Bangar stuff, the Blood Legion stuff. I think it's been pretty close. It's been pretty goddamn good, really. I think it's been impressive, and I think the devs have got the right idea. I haven't always felt that way. Uh, so that's where a lot of these, these discussions, I think, have come in over time. Uh, namely, it's the character of Ritlock. You know, and Ritlock's... Uh, Ritlock's character changing because of all of his travels, and that's all very plausible and real, but I've pointed out how, story-wise, I don't think he's such an interesting character to follow anymore, and I'm not... I'm not digging it. I think they're making a mistake with him. I say that, and then they say, but it's totally realistic he'd change. But I don't care if it's realistic. That's not the point. It's just the same discussion. It's Ritlock, who is a char, so... but. Yeah, yeah without Bangar, yeah, he kind of he kind of counterbalances what we've lost from Ritlock. I think that's a, that's a decent way of putting it. I've gone completely off the rails here because I followed the green star burst instead of the, the grey, the white one, the yellow one. Uh, can I just say thanks again to everyone who subbed earlier with that weird hype chain thing? That was pretty cool, guys. Thank you. Uh, what do you think of skin for the sky scale as a claw of jaw mag? To quote all or the shatter will be on the table. Um, well, a skin? Or you mean like a 2000 gem one where they change the model a bit and stuff? Probably would be a cool idea. Um... You know, uh, if ArenaNet are struggling for uh, gem store ideas, you know, they're clearly looking at the forums, i.e. the Pegasus thing. Here's my suggestion to you, ArenaNet. Here we go. All right, this is how you make big bank going forwards. New category. I know, I know. A lot of work. You just add it down here. Above novelties, probably. Uh, call that shit um, waypoint uh, animations or, or something like that. And what it is, is whenever I waypoint, I play an animation now as I waypoint. The default one would just be, you know, uh, that fractal dissolving one that you see in Fractals of the Mist. That's everyone's default. But you can buy new ones that do all kinds of things. Float you away on balloons, glide you out, birds come in and take you away, little sky scale hatchlings do, melt into the ground, whatever, yeah? And you can just go ham on those, sell, sell a bunch of those. That'll keep you going another year or so. Also, uh, there should be an option, little checkbox in the options, uh, so that I can s skip watching my own animation. So I just instantly hit the loading screen. Yeah, the default, the option should not be enabled by default. So by default, you do see the animation, but for all the picky nerds, they're like, nah, I'm losing two seconds now. Uh, you know, they can hit that. But yeah, and then you can uh, you can sell some stuff on that. Yeah, profession-specific ones from Kabads. Come on, it's easy. Easy. Easy to come up with ideas.
I wonder how much they earn on the whole fun Funko Pop thing. Yeah, you essentially mail carry yourself to waypoints. Exactly. They can copy paste a lot of the mail carrier stuff, except instead of it carrying a letter, it's carrying you. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, if you're struggling, all right? If you're struggling, it's a good idea. Don't worry. Uh, it's not my idea. You don't have to pay me royalties. It's out there. Public domain. Or whatever. Resurrection animations as well. Uh, yeah, I guess. They've got finishers. Resurrectors. Is it kind of an idea? They could probably make more money on finishers. If um, if they tweaked the game, here you go. Look, what did I say? What did I say? Hey guys, uh, they could probably make more money if they made it so that any death always pays the finisher, not just slash GGs, but any death. They've probably thought of that one. There might be a reason why they don't do that. People call any gem store update cash grabbing. Well, I mean. I don't even know what cash grabbing means, to be honest, at this point. It's just like an overused term to express, I am not happy with having to spend money. That's, that's what it is. But it's not even having to spend money. That's the great conceit of most gem store discussions. Yeah, the Vista really didn't do very well. How about skill skins? Yeah, I think that, that that's... Skill skins they've probably thought of, and I know they've been suggested for many times over the years, and they don't do it. So I have to assume that the reason they don't is probably, like, all the SFX and stuff that goes into that is a pain in the ass, and they really are crunched for that. that as far as I know, that's the kind of work that's very high in demand, a real struggle to get for any kind of content or update you want to do. So they, they tend to not do that kind of stuff. You know, they... Let's take Season 3's period. You know, they're making Path of Fire, so they're going all gung-ho on the new Elite specs instead of just putting them on the gem store. I feel like that is a thing I don't want them to do because that really would be a place where the gem store starts taking real talents away from substantive updates in the game later. You know, it's okay to have, like, a cell of people, like, making some skins and things, but when it's full-on, like, skill animations... I feel like, look, could you just not just put that work, combine it with some good design, and have a new Elite Specs coming out of it? Um, so, yeah. All right, well, that's map comp. And uh, it's a shame. I'm really enjoying myself. I will try this Trial of Coda, because I don't think I've ever done that event, and it might be a new type of one. I'm enjoying myself, but I've got to go, guys. I'm not... I'm not messing around here. I've, I've got to go. So we'll, we'll, we'll try and do this and see uh, what we've got. Finish on death would make well versus well visually even worse. Well, again, I, I think there should be options for the stuff you turn them off, you know. I don't like options bloat and I don't like sloppy design that is allowed to be sloppy because oh, if they don't like it, just give them an option. I don't like that stuff. But when it comes to um, visuals and cosmetics and kind of like ancillary stuff to the game, I, I, I'm sort of more willing. I think. Aren't some legendaries kind of skill skins? Kind of. They don't really change it in any way. All they really can change is the projectile. And add a bit of a trail, but you know, non legendaries can do that too. They're kind of in that middle ground. You're totally right. I loved your audiobook series, by the way. Convinced me to sub to Patreon because I feel like I'm stealing. Am I going to do Edge of Destiny ne next? Thank you, first of, all, first of all, very much. Second of all, I don't know whether I'm going to do Edge of Destiny because... Um, well, you asked, am I going to do it next? The answer to that is yes. I will do it next it, when another audiobook comes. But that might not be for like a long, long, long time. I don't know just yet, but when I get to a week of wanting to produce Guild Wars 2 stuff, it's kind of going to be like, all right, do I do an audiobook that very limited people will see, or do I make videos everyone's going to really like? And I think I'm going to have to go in the other direction with that. I am taking note, though, a lot of people have said stuff like you just did, and if, in the end, it kind of turns out I got a lot of support and, and patronage and stuff, 
because of the friggin... Alright, what do I do? Finish the patrol. To release their unstable essence. They're gonna stand up again now, are they? I don't want to kill that last stealth guy because it might allow me to get all the stomps before the event ends. It doesn't look like it will. No, it, it looks like it will actually. Reinforcements remaining one. Did I run out of time? Oh, there you go. The charge prepared and the event's done. Wow. So what's the sequel event here then? This is such a cool spooky forest. They did such a good job with this. Call out the new enemy leader. Your enemy will leave the area. Low horn. Iron Fist Champion. Yeah, I definitely never did this. Hopefully we can kill him just like we killed the Wisp. Look at that extra zeal, zeal uh, symbol down there. Beautiful. Oh shit, it's a fucking... Oh my god. Do I come into this? Oh, uh, he's like a bounty. I don't think I can solo this. If anyone wants to come join me... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to solo a guy with retail in a bounty style thing. I need to walk into the orbs to discharge my build up. Oh, revive orb. I already have a tag. I'm already appearing online. No one's here. I'll try. I got 9% in just a couple of attacks. He doesn't look tanky. I've only got 7 minutes. His health shouldn't reset by the time my orb triggers. Oh no, it did. Fuck. And I'm not going to have mantras, so this is really bad. If anyone wants to come, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, I'm paying attention. If, if, if it really feels like i got a lot of like real enthusiasm from it, I might bump the audiobooks up earlier. But right now, I'm pretty confident I have no plans to do the next one anytime soon. It's been out long enough now that I can get a sense of who's going to watch it. And it, it, it didn't really build. I had a pretty nice review as well. Uh, I kind of wanted to read on today's stream, but uh, I won't actually. Dude, this guy's... Fuck's sake, that branch is a real trap. It looks like you can jump over it, and then you totally can't. Dude, and there's that log there. I can't even see it. Oh my god, the ground is so clippy here. I know if Arena Net were trying to... But it's like they've emulated that like horror experience of struggling to move around. How the fuck am I getting so pressured? From like one torment? Are you serious? I'm just trying to survive right now until maybe someone comes. Dude, just being near him. Like, maybe it's because I need to be near the orbs. Dude, this is awful. The positioning of these orbs and stuff. At least it's throwing the nav mesh off. Right, we've done 1% more damage than we did before by playing way slower. F2 here for a second. <gasps> There's a player. Oh my god, just having one other person. I think, oh my, are you serious? I can, uh, I can res. Oh my god, they have arrived. If that's you guys, well done. Holy shit. Yeah, this is so much better now. The break bar goes down. We can all burn him at once. Fucking, I was mid-dodge. I don't get it. Is it the pulsing AoE or something? Because I'm not next to the, the, the energy. Break bar again. Ooh, the retail. Could be the retail a lot of the time. I'm getting actually spanked down. Let's give them all a bit of F3 goodness right now. Taunt wasn't really necessary, but whatever. The thing with this is you've got to get the last tick for the, the big burns. Five torment from one attack. Retail counterbalance is Signet of Agony. Beautiful, guys. Well done, well done. Yeah, i definitely never done that, so that was awesome. Just need to spend more time in the first half of the map. It's pretty obvious, right? Very good. I can keep my eyes up for another uh, primer. Yeah, I understand a lot of the EU people will be at the stream. 
The proportion of EU people is probably way higher than uh, NA for the streams, just because of the time of day. There's an idol here. This is exactly what I was hoping to see. Oh, and we get the cool, like, almost witchery music. But, uh, yeah, with the collection of that, guys. Wait, hold on. The gates weren't in it last patch, so where does this one take me? Well, up here, I guess. All right. Well, yeah, that, that's going to be it today, guys. Uh, let me just uh, give you a quick rundown of things that are happening. First of all, thanks to all the support, really. Uh, second, to anyone who might have missed it, I have a really important video on the YouTube channel right now talking about all the stuff you can get out of Patreon. So seriously, if, if you want to, I would really, really appreciate you guys checking that video out. Uh, like I say, it's already done fantastic. Um, but I know for a fact a lot of people haven't clicked it who normally would click my other stuff. And so if you've missed it, just a little bit of an encouragement. There's absolutely no obligation. Beyond that, uh, and there's a link in chat. Beyond that, in 50 minutes will be the next episode of Arena. And uh, I'll be back here as well tomorrow, same time, every day. So thanks, guys. That's it. Appreciate all the subs, all the all the cool comments, discussion. Uh, I hope you're all having fun, and uh, let's keep it going. Um, we'll see how the week goes. Cheers, guys. Take it easy. And we'll see the new Drakkar rework tomorrow and the new strike missions tomorrow. There's a lot going on. Cheers, guys. Ta-ta now. Bye.